So, um, my name is Peter Gutz. I'm here with Stefan Willig today. We're both from IBM. Hello. Ah. Thank you. Sorry. Um, and we'd like to talk a little bit about the bit service today. So, what exactly is the bit service? To answer that question, it probably makes sense to actually first answer the question, what are bits? So bits in the clouds, uh, Cloud Foundry context are your application artifacts, that is your package or source code simply. It's your compiled app, which is the droplet. It's build packs. Um, now, where are those bits stored? There are actually different backends um, the simplest one could be um, local disk. That's probably more for uh, your test environments. Could be web dev, could be Amazon S3, OpenStack Swift. It really doesn't matter. It, so as long as it is supported by the uh, Ruby Fog library, um, then usually it can be used for as a blob store. Now, let's have a closer look at how the bits are actually used. And for this, let's see what happens if you actually push an app. And in this case, let's just push the app without starting it, actually. So in this case, the CF CLI makes a post request to the cloud controller against v2 apps. And that actually creates the app in the cloud controller. Then it returns a success code, hopefully. Um, the next step is that it actually wants to upload all the, the files that make up the package, which, as we learned earlier, we call bits. And so for this, um, it does something that we call resource matching. And it's basically an algorithm to reduce the, the amount of files that we actually have to upload. So in this, call, uh, in this case, we make a put request against um, v2 resource match. And we provi provided a list of fingerprints that is currently SHA-1 checksums of the files that we want to upload. The cloud controller, in turn, talks to the blob store and asks which of these files do actually exist. Now, after it got the answer from the blob store, it goes back. Um, here, we're here at this point. Um, the cloud controller uh, returns the missing fi fingerprints to uh, the CFCLI. Now the CFCLI can start and um, zip all the files that are still missing in the blob store and then upload the zip file to the blob store. Again, cloud controller will uh, fetch all the existing files from the blob store, store the new files, and now that it has all the files that make up a package, zip, zip them um, and um, store them in the blob store. And of course, also tell the uh, CFCLI, okay, everything was successful, um, we're done here. This is all uh, just vanilla Cloud Foundry, no bit service involved. Let's have a quick look at what, how, how the bits are actually stored in, in your blob store. So in that case, let's do a quick um, demo here. We're logging into the blob store, Bosch SSH, and um, um, CDing into um, var vcap store shared, where we store all the bits. Uh, in a blob store, and yeah. So in this case, let's have a look at the packages, which if we do an ls or tree in this case is empty, and um, if we go now back to our uh, local machine and do our cf push, okay. So let's just push uh, very simply um, dora with a no start as we just did, then. It will do exactly the steps that we went through uh, a minute ago. And now let's check on the blob store again what has happened. OK, no rocket science, no magic. We can see that now we have the package here um, as a GUID in the blob store. We can check what kind of file this is, actually. And uh, we'll see it's a zip file. When we check the contents of this, so simple unzip list of that file gives us all the contents of Dara. Cool. Okay, 
Now, um, if we can I remove this actually. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, yeah. Um, so let's quickly check the droplets directory. And as we would expect, there is nothing in it yet. It's completely empty um, because we haven't staged the app yet. So now if we go back to our CF client and actually start the app, it will do its usual thing. We'll take the build pack, build our app, build our Dora app, and uh, create the dro a droplet. And we'll see in a second that it's going to upload the droplet. Yes. So now it's uploading the droplet to the Blob Store. And this takes a little while because it's a bit more. Um, OK. And then let's check back with the Blob Store and see what we have in here. And again, it's exactly what we would expect. We get the, the actual droplet and our Linux FS. And with that, I would like to hand over to Steffen. We'll talk more about the bit surface itself. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Um, so the question is, with all the stuff that you've seen so far, um, that all works, right? That this is the reality today. So why do we need something in between? Why do we need a bit service? And the basic idea is that we want to free the cloud controller from any of the bit service, uh, from any of the bits related work, in order to be able to scale both the bits handling and the cloud controller independently. So depending on the characteristics of your deployment, you may have a lot of bits uh, uh, stuff going on because your developers are really engaged and pushing all the time. There's lots of things going on. But you could uh, very well imagine the opposite situation, that you have something that's pretty stable and uh, doesn't change very often, but has a lot of other cloud controller activity. So why would you need to have a, a big cloud controller deployment with many instances in the first case uh, when all of the stuff is just going around bits and in the other case you want to have your cloud controller uh, really beefed up in many instances but there's not a lot going on with bits so we want to have this uh, ability to scale both cloud controller and the bits handling independently uh, the rest of the story is actually a classic microservice extraction story. So all of the benefits we get from uh, encapsulating the bits handling into its own thing are like stuff like better maintainability. So if the bit service is a thing in its own, we can uh, develop it further, we can change things uh, behind it. Uh, it actually also leads to simpler operations. Like if you have this thing centered around bits, if there's something wrong with the bits handling, there's a certain place you can go to. It's no longer this big, massive cloud controller that does a lot of things, and today also does the, uh, the bits handling. Now, if there's something wrong uh, with bits handling, you just go to the bit service uh, VM and see what's, what's happening there. Also, following the extraction story, uh, we get a way cleaner API, hopefully, right? right. So there is one thing, one set of API uh, statements that we have that's only related to bits, uh, bits operations, and uh, it's easier to find, easier to understand, less, uh, less surface, surface to cover. Um, also, if we want to iterate over new features, for instance, the resource matching that we just talked about, if we want to make changes on that today, uh, it will actually mean code changes in the cloud controller. In the future, if there's any uh, way to improve that, it only is changes in the bit service in this uh, single microservice, which would hopefully make it way simpler to actually iterate over these things. So when we talk about the bit service, what does it mean from an organizational point of view? Uh, the bit service today is a CF incubation project. So there's a team, uh, the Flintstone team, that right now consists of uh, Peter and me as, as a pair. We had great help from uh, another pair from Pivotal in London, Steve and Thiago, that uh, helped actually starting off 46 months in this project. Uh, so we were two pairs then. Uh, but the f whole focus of this project is really a around managing bits, right? That's the sole uh, purpose of this library. It's a Cloud Foundry specific abstraction of uh, object stores with uh, a very clearly defined HTTP API. And as, as we said before, as a goal, it is really the encapsulation of all of the bits related functionalities and nothing else. 
Uh, in terms of deployment, it is completely Bosch managed. So if you enable the bit service, you'll find another uh, job in your uh, deployment manifest uh, if it's generated. And uh, you'll find, of course, this VM in your deployment that is uh, centered around bits. When we talk about what the bit service is, of course, there's also a question what it's not. And obviously, we're not trying to create yet another universal storage. Uh, we have that today with the blob stores uh, that we're using. Uh, and there is no reason to, to, for us to do the same thing again, uh, unless there is benefits and we didn't see any. The benefit that we actually have is our cleanly defined, very domain-specific API for Cloud Foundry-related bits operations. That's what the bit service is, and it's not universal. Uh, also, again, in the same vein, it's not a generic storage API. For instance, as we uh, had seen the, in the previous session, like you know, volume drivers and stuff, is a completely different topic. That is not what the bit service is. It's HTTP based uh, for a domain specific uh, bit service operation. Um, a very qu uh, quick overview of the API. I won't go into too many details to bore you with uh, HTTP resources and verbs just to see uh, what we have. And as it is an extraction right now from the Cloud Controller, it is actually looking very similar to what you can see in the Cloud Controller today. Uh, so the uh, first thing is centered around the uh, resource matching. So there's uh, actually just post uh, uh, verbs for anything that is related to finding out what's uh, in the client when the client is actually sending the shards, finding uh, out what the client has to send to the server and actually getting the whole thing out of the bit servers again uh, with both the stuff that was sent by the client and what may have been in the, uh, in the backing blob store already. Then there's the build pack cache, which is something specific to applying build packs. For instance, if you have a Ruby application, there's additional stuff that the application has dependencies on, Ruby gems and stuff like that. And this stuff is all stored in the build pack cache. And there's an important thing here to, to note. Um, the build pack cache is the first thing uh, as compared to the, uh, the app stash that is actually uh, depending on the app quit. So, um, Whenever you destroy the application, the build pack cache will also be subsequent, subsequently be removed from the bit service uh, through uh, API calls. Um, and the remaining resources are actually pretty similar, but we decided to uh, keep, keep them separate in, from an implementation perspective. Uh, again, it's all centered around uh, GUIDs for the individual resources. Uh, so there's build packs, uh, there's droplets, and there's also packages uh, from a V3 perspective, which all have similar APIs. Uh, just put the stuff there uh, with a certain grid. Uh, you can get it back, and you can delete it when you long, no longer need it. Uh, and as you can see, this is not a complete list of all of the REST primitives you, you could imagine from like a generic REST service, but it's really scoped around what is actually required for uh, handling bits uh, when you talk to a bit service. So it's really uh, minimal in, in that sense. So what's the consequences? What, what's the benefit that you get uh, today? And we will soon go into what, what the benefit could be in the future when we further develop it. Uh, first of all, like I said before, it's about that independent scalability. So uh, with the bit service enabled, the cloud controller is now free from handling bits. And we can scale both cloud controller and bit service independently. Uh, as a drawback, of course, it's one more thing. Like it's a little more complexity in your deployment. It's one more VM, uh, or potentially many, uh, if you want to scale independently, uh, that you need to ca take care of. As an application developer, uh, extracting the bit service into its own thing, the benefit is, uh, of course, uh, that the CC has the potential to become more responsive because we can offload bit service work. As we will see soon, we're not quite there yet. We're in the process of doing that. But obviously, like with all of the extraction and uh, microservices uh, stories, you got to first extract something in order to be able to make a change later on. It's like, you know, uh, make change easy and then make the easy change. So we're in, in that uh, first stage uh, still. Um, and of course, with more efficient bits handling, uh, as an application developer, you would hopefully get also faster app push times because you're pushing now something to something that's probably not as uh, loaded and uh, as under heavy load as the cloud controller. File uploads, downloads of uh, uh, droplets and such will hopefully become faster. Um, if you're a Cloud Foundry developer, uh, hopefully the API will be appealing to you because it's, like I said before, it's domain specific. So it's just centered around those uh, 
certain resources and don't like a generic thing you, you, you need to do or you could do anything with it. Um, which brings us to where we are today, uh, where we are in, in terms of status. Uh, so the bit service is part of Cloud Foundry since uh, 241, uh, which uh, is back in, in, in August. Uh, it is uh, enabled by a feature flag. Uh, right now, by default, the feature flag is off. So if you install 241 or anything later on, you will have the bit service, but it's not like uh, enabled and used and, and also uh, not deployed. But you can just turning it on. Um, there is no migration needed. So if you uh, push your application to uh, a Cloud Foundry deployment which with the bit service disabled, and if you enable, enable it later on, there will be no migration needed. We uh, take uh, great care in maintaining the same layout in the backing blob store. So there's nothing that uh, actually uh, should go wrong there. And we, of course, do have tests for that and making sure it's, that's the way as we promise. Um, the API that we support is both uh, the version 2 and version 3 API. Uh, so there is no like uh, difference in uh, if you enable the bit service. By the way, speaking of blob stores, if there's anyone in the room or if you know of anyone who's using uh, anything else than the S3 or Swift backends uh, with the Cloud Foundry deployment, please uh, talk to us later on. Uh, uh, I would be interested to hear, uh, first of course, uh, what you're using and also why you're using it. Uh, because like with many sessions, we would, we would like to get some feedback on what people are using so we can focus our resources on building and supporting the right backends and also potentially understand where our uh, room for, where is room for improvement. Um, what's the next steps uh, we would like to work on? Uh, obviously. Uh, like I said before, we are in that sort of transition period. We completed the extraction of the bit service from the cloud controller, but uh, in order to realize the full benefits, uh, there is some workflow changes required um, to, uh, to actually read the benefits, right? So we are working with the CLI team. Uh, we're looking into what changes are required in the stager in order to be able to read these benefits. And uh, as uh, some examples on where we are and where we'd we would like to go, we have some flows here. So first of all, there's the legacy flow in, uh, uh, in the, on the very top. This is what you have today without the bit service, right? You just have the CLI talking to the cloud controller and the cloud controller st stores some stuff in, in the blob store. In the middle is where we are today with the bit service if you uh, choose to enable it. Uh, as you can see, it's just one more component when you can ask yourself where's the benefit. Like I said before, there is no like direct benefit yet. Um, but as you can see in, in the bottom column here, once we are able to actually uh, make the changes to the clients and, for instance, have the CLI client actually talking to the, uh, to the cloud controller and saying, you know, uh, there is something to be uploaded and we, ha we can have the cloud controller return back to the client saying, here's a URL, here's a signed URL we can safely put your uh, bits onto, then it's only communication between the client and the bit service and the cloud controller doesn't have to do anything while all this bits handling is uh, being worked on and we just have to get back to the cloud controller and let it know for instance like this uh, where you see in, on the very bottom once the bit service handling is, is done uh, and the bit service actually responds with, uh, uh, with the package hash for instance that's, this is the, the only uh, second step where we need to uh, need to let the cloud controller know uh, that the bits uh, upload was successful. So this is future, this is not uh, uh, reality today. There's a proposal out there, not very formal, but just to get some feedback if, you, if you're interested. Uh, just have a look at this proposal and give us feedback or comments. Speaking of the proposal, uh, there are some references here. Uh, you can find the code for uh, the bit service, uh, obviously in the release, and uh, you go from the release to like source and CI and everything that we have. There's the public pipeline you can have a look at. Uh, but when I talked about the migration stuff, all of the tests we're doing to make sure we're not breaking anything. There's the tracker where you can see our backlog and uh, p potentially provide some comments or uh, feedback to us. And finally, there's the presentation. If you want to get into any of these, any of these references here, uh, these are all uh, like online, and you can have a look at um, what we wrote there. If you have any additional questions, with that, uh, we're done. Any questions? Yes, please.
Yeah, so the... Yeah, so the question was centered around Fog and all of the potential blob store backends. And uh, right now, there's like uh, no no limit beyond the limits that are there today because we're still using Fog. The bit service is, is right now implemented as a Ruby app because of that status as an extraction from the cloud controller. Um, so whatever you can use, uh, whatever you use today, you can still use with the bit service. But obviously, like this is very useful feedback for us that you're using NFS uh, because um, in the end, it's about you know all of the stuff that we're testing, and if we're looking into uh, maybe re-implementing stuff or optimizing stuff, it's important to know what people are actually using in terms of backends. So uh, there's no plans right now, as far as I'm aware of, to actually remove uh, Fog, so you could still use that. Uh, but it's important as feedback for the future. Yeah, thanks, thanks for that. And Simon's sitting right behind you, so we can probably continue that. Simon's our PM, right? Uh, he. Um, uh, covers the, the Flintstone team. And um, we can have a discussion around the details and uh, later on. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, well, thanks, then. We're done.